The Tale of Squirrel Nutkin by Beatrix Potter. Once upon a time, there was a squirrel and he went all around the world. That end. <laughs> Just kidding. That's not really how it goes, is it? Shall we begin? The Tale of Squirrel Nutkin by Beatrix Potter. This is a tale about a tale. A tale that belonged to a little red squirrel. His name was Nutkin. He had a brother called Twinkleberry and a great many cousins. They lived in a wood at the edge of a lake. In the middle of the lake, there was an island covered with trees and nut bushes. And among those trees stands a hollow oak tree, which is the house of an owl who was called Old Brown. One autumn, when the nuts were ripe and the leaves on the hazel bushes were golden and green, Nutkin and Twinkleberry and all the other little squirrels came out of the wood and down to the edge of the lake. They made little rafts out of twigs and they paddled away over the water to Owl Island to gather nuts. Each squirrel had a sack and a large oar and spread out its tail for a sail. They also took with them an offering of three fat mice as a present for Old Brown and put them down on his doorstep. Can you see them going along in their little rafts? And they're using their tails as sails, and that's their oar, all the way over to Owl Island. Then Twinkleberry and the other little squirrels each made a low bow and said politely, Old Mr. Brown, will you favour us with permission to gather nuts upon your island? But... Nutkin was excessively impertinent in his manners. That means rude. He bobbed up and down like a little cherry and singing, Riddle me rot, riddle me rot, tote, tote. Little wee man in a red, red coat. A staff in his hand and a stone in his throat. I'll tell you a riddle if, you're, if you give me a groat. <sighs> now, this riddle is as old as the hills. Mr. Brown paid no attention whatever to Nutkin. He shut his eyes obstinately and went to sleep. The squirrels filled their little sacks with nuts and sailed away home in the evening. But the next morning they all came back again to Owl Island and Twinkleberry and the others brought a fine fat mole and laid it on the stone in front of Old Brown's doorway and said, Mr Brown, will you favour us with the gracious permission to gather more nuts? But Nutkin, who had no respect, began jumping up and down, tickling Old Brown with a nettle and singing, Oh, Mr. B, riddle me re, hitty pitty within the wall, hitty pitty without the wall, if you touch hitty pitty, hitty pitty will bite you. Hmm. Mr. Brown woke up suddenly and carried the mole into his house. He shut the door into Nutkin's face. Presently, a th little thread of blue smoke came from the wood fire from the top of the tree. And Nutkin peeked through the hole and sang, A house full, a hole full, you cannot gather a bowl full. Hmm. The squirrels searched for nuts all over the island and filled their little sacks. But Nutkin gathered oak apples and yellow and scarlet and up, up upon a beech stump playing marbles and watching the door of Old Brown. On the third day, the squirrels got up very early and went fishing. They caught seven fat minnows as a present for Old Brown and they paddled over the lake and landed under, under a crooked chestnut tree on Owl Island. He's not doing any gathering of nuts, is he? He's just playing marbles. It's very lazy. Twinkleberry and six of the other little squirrels each carried a fat minnow. But Nutkin, who had no ounce of manners, brought no present at all. He ran out front singing, The man in the wilderness said to me, How many strawberries grow in the sea? I answered him as I thought good, As many red herrings as grow in the wood. But now Mr Brown took no interest in riddles, not even when the answer was provided for him. On the fourth day, the squirrels brought a present of six fat beetles, which were as good as plums and plum pudding for old Brown. Each beetle was wrapped up carefully in a dock leaf and fastened with a pine needle pin. But Nutkin sang as rudely as ever, Old Mr. B, riddle me re, flower of wrinkle and fruit of Spain, met together in a shower of rain, push a bag, tie around with string, if you tell me this riddle, I'll give you a ring. Which was ridiculous of Nutkin, because he had not got any ring to give to Old Brown. 
Probably lucky you didn't ask for it. The other squirrels hunted up and down nut bushes, but Nutkin gathered Robin's pin cushions off a briar bush and stuck them full of pine needles. On the fifth day, the squirrels brought a present of wild honey. It was so sticky that they licked their thick fingers as they put it down upon the stone. They'd stolen it out of a bumblebee's nest on the tippity top of a hill. Now, but Nutkin skipped up and down singing, hum a buzz, hum a buzz, buzz, hum a buzz. As I went over Tipple Tine, I met a flock of bonny swine, some yellow naked and some yellow backed. They were very bonny swine, two went over Tipple Tine. Hmm. Old Mr. Brown turned up his eyes in disgust at the impertinence of Nutkin, but he ate, ate up all the honey. The squirrels filled up their little snacks, uh, sacks with nuts, but Nutkin sat upon a fat, fat rock and played nine pins with a crab apple and pine cones. On the sixth day, which was a Saturday, the squirrels came again for the last time. They brought a new laid egg and a little rush basket as a last parting present to Old Brown. And he's not doing anything again, is he? But Nutkin ran in front laughing and shouting, Humpty Dumpty lies in the beck with a white counterpane around his neck. Four do 40 doctors and 40 rights cannot put Humpty Dumpty back to rights. Now, Old Brown took an interest in eggs. He opened one eye and shut it again, but he did not speak. Nutkin became more and more impertinent. That's rude. Old Mr. B, old Mr. B, Hickamore, Hickamore on the king's kitchen door. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't drive Hickamore, Hickamore on the king's kitchen door. Nutkin danced up and down like a sunbeam, but old Brown said nothing. Look at him being really naughty and they're very shocked, aren't they? <gasps> what are you doing? You're in trouble. Nutkin began again. Arthur O'Bower has broken his band. He comes roaring up the land. The King of Scots with all the power cannot turn Arthur of the bower. Nutkin made a whirring noise, sound like a wind, and he just made a running jump onto the head of Old Brown. Then all of a lot once there was a fluttering and a scuttling and a loud squeak. The other squirrels scuttled away into the bushes. When they came back very cautiously, peeping around the tree, there was Old Brown sitting on the doorstep, quite still, with his eyes closed, as if nothing had happened. But Nutkin was in his waistcoat pocket. This looks like the end of the story, but it isn't. Old Brown carried Nutkin into his house and held him up by the tail, intending to skin him. But Nutkin pulled so very hard that his tail broke in two, and he dashed up the staircase and escaped out the, at the attic window. And to, to this day, if you meet Nutkin on, up the tree and ask him a riddle, he will throw sticks at you and stamp his feet and scold and shout, Cuck, 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 cuck. The end.